Greetings hobbyists, this is our Sons of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at a fantastic Blender add-on called Flowify. So I have featured Flowify on the channel before, it was part of a video where I was adding detail onto a banner, but I wanted to do a specific video, in fact two specific videos, looking at exactly what this does. So we're going to be covering the basics of how this works in this first video, and then we'll have a look at some of the more involved tricks that we can do with this. But I'm going to be honest, this is such a foolproof deformation tool that there isn't actually that much that's tricky to it. So let's start out by having a look at what this does. So this is designed so you can quickly and easily deform objects onto another. And this works off of using three components. What you have is your source object, that's the thing you want to copy onto the other object. Your source grid, that's a plane that's going to help you with the deformation, and then a target surface, which is where you want your source object deformed onto. Now, this used to be slightly more complicated, where you had to make your own source grid, and that could lead to some elements of deformation. If you didn't get the sizing quite right, normally it wasn't really a problem, but this has been made vastly easier now. What you can do now is if you click on your object, you can just go to Flurify, which is now a button conveniently placed at the top, or if you prefer, you can still right click and click on Flurify, and then you can create your source grid from target surface. So click on that and you've got your source grid. Now, the only limitation to this is this must be something that is when flattened out. So if we imagine if we flattened this out, could be seen as a rectangle. So effectively it's got four sides, regardless of how curved they are. So that is the only limitation on this, but this comes from a guy called Mark Kingsnorth, and if you want to deform something where you can't stick to that limitation, he does have a load of other add-ons as well, such as conform objects, and one that's based on UV wrapping, that will probably do everything that you need anyway. So it's about what's the best tool for your purpose. Now from this point you've got some options, now I will say you can move this plane around as much as you want to afterwards, but I find that having this directly on top of it isn't the most useful thing in the world. I have a tendency to change it so that my location is normally like five or 10 up, depending on what I'm dealing with. And then I'm gonna move this over to the Y, let's say something like 15. So it's off to the side, just so I can see both things at the same time. That is entirely a personal preference, but that's the way I'd go with it. The other thing that you can fiddle around with is that you can change the width, either to be based on the maximum, the average or the minimum. So let's just go through what that is. So at the moment, I've got it on max, and that means it's gonna look on this object for the maximum width, and that maximum width is going to be here on this outer edge. So it is working out this flattened width based on that edge. Now you can also do it on the minimum, which would probably be somewhere in the middle there, or you can do it on the average. Now, this is quite important for your end purpose, and that's why it's great that it's got these options because as we deform an object over the top of this, it is going to have to stretch, at least in this object, because it's getting wider and thinner, depending on where it is. And you might decide that you want certain bits to be less stretched or compressed than others. For example, if it's really important that your maximum thickness is the bit that's perfect, then you could set this width to max. If you want the minimum to be the perfect bit, then minimum. I generally like the average because it means that you're getting a good mixture halfway between the two. But that's something that you could easily play around with. You can also do the same thing with length, but my length is the same for whatever it is gonna be, because in this instance, all of these lengths are the same. But that might be different. You can also change rotations and scales if you want to. I'm not sure why you would, but you can do. So let's click off. So we've now got our source grid which means that we're ready to go. All we need is our objects that we want to form. So what I'm gonna do for the sake of this is sort of make something that's gonna look like a very rudimentary, I don't know, sort of spine and ribs. I'm not sure why that came into my head. I think it was just because I was working on various things where I wanted a skeleton recently. Either that or it's because I've been really watching Attack on Titan and that seemed something cool that I could do. So I'm just gonna model this out. It's relatively basic modeling techniques. I'm using machine tools to speed things up a bit but there's nothing particularly exciting about this. But I did want to show the modeling of this so that you got an idea of what I was doing and didn't just have it appear out of nowhere. Okay, so at this point, let's talk through this. Uh, what I've got here is already this has been broken up, so I've just added in some edge loops. I'm actually gonna do the same thing with this as well because the one thing we need is additional geometry to allow it to flex. So I'm just gonna control an R, scroll up a little bit and then type in 128, but you could do this however we wanted. So that seems to work. 
uh, and what we want is it to be pretty much aligned with all of these and I've sort of cheated by knowing that there's 128 of these here so this is literally perfect but you could always do more or less and it's not going to make too much of a problem. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add in an array so I'm just going to do that really lazily with hard ops but you can do that with a normal array tool just to demonstrate some points so let's put in two there let's shift and d and put that maybe here with let's go with two so i'm just going to change that down to two and then maybe i'll shift and d and then do that along here and then we'll up that to four just so we've got some different points so at the moment we've got these using modifiers that's not a problem at all it will still work perfectly well and we want to add this to our object. So we're just going to do one to begin with. So I'm just going to do this spine. So let's show how this works. So what we're going to do is we're going to select our object, click Flowify, and then it wants us to select our source grid. Now, yours will turn blue and red. Mine I've set up so that it turns yellow if the wrong side is facing up. So you'll notice that the inside faces here are yellow. I've got a video on my setup. There's a link in the description if you want to do it. It covers how to make this nice red color and also how to set it up so you don't turn everything blue and red and it looks really annoying. But that's there to make sure that you don't have anything set up so it's looking the wrong way. And that's going to be important. So we want these matching where they do. So that's great. We also don't want any of this to be flipped around from our source object. And again, that's fine. Then I need to pick from what corner I want to go from on my source grid. So let's just use this back corner there. This will then highlight the grid to say it's recognized it. And I can now set this to where I want this to be. And really usefully, this points out then where all of the corners go. Now you could, if you decide to do it the other way around, do that. And you'll notice it's sort of flipping everything and twisting it round. It's a little bit hard to visualize, but that is making sense. But what I've done is I've set this up so that my line is blue, which is the main line that I'm picking, and the other ones are green. And that's all there in the add-on preferences, which is really nice, so you can change this around if you want to. I think initially it starts off all as green. I just like having my line that I've picked being the one that's in blue. And then you just click, and you've got your spine, or my spine, or whatever your object is, being deformed onto this surface. And you can see we've added in a modifier that's creating our Flowify node that's doing everything for us. Now, what's really cool about this is that we've got lots of things that we can change here. So for example, if I realize that my height isn't quite right for some reason, I can exaggerate this more or less, which is really cool. I'm gonna put that back to one, and that makes this really easy to fiddle around with. You can also translate things left and right and that's noticed perfectly left and right. It's not going round the object. Whereas if you want to go make it go left or right on the object itself, I can actually come to my object, and this is where this is so cool. So come to the source object, G, and then let's move this on the X axis, and you'll notice it will actually move it round to where it is relative to that point. And in fact, I could even Q and then array this along the axis, and then do that, and we can add loads more. Like, look how quick this is to do. It's amazing. If, so if I want this really ribbed sort of look, I can do that, or I could do something with just three. It's entirely up to you. I'm just going to bring that back to the center so it can act as my spine. Now, what I'm not going to do is actually delete this. Now, something important about this, just in terms of saving time, is I don't need to do this one at a time. I can select, let's say, all these objects, and then Flowify. I'm just going to select that corner there and then come to this corner here, and then click, and it's done all of them in one go. So we've got everything put together there. And as before, if I want this to be on the center, I can just G, and then let's Y that across a bit, and I can just get everything moved. So uh, this is just so cool. It makes it so easy to use. And if I do decide that actually, I want to do this a bit differently, for example, I could, let's just do that again, and flurify this corner here, over to that corner there. So this is gonna effectively rotate everything round by 180. So now I've got the four parts, which is on this side over here, because I've put this corner to that face. So there is a little bit of, if you want to fill around with this, a little bit of spatial interpretation, or you could just rotate this round. So really, really easy to work with, and you can see how nicely this has deformed everything. 
What's really cool about this is everything functions with this. So for example, if I select all of these, as well as being able to move them backwards and forwards, so we did this earlier with this on the y-axis, I can also select all of these, and then G, and then Z, and it's going to move everything out. But in relation to this plane that we've got, we could do it further inside if we wanted to. But I can do this further out. So you've got these opportunities to make these really, really cool shapes with these overarching objects, if that's what you want. So I really love this as a tool. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Now, if I just get rid of these, let's just H to hide those and H to hide these. I just want to demonstrate another use for this, which I think is a really important one, and that is that if you want to do anything with text, so if I just bring in a text there, and then let's Alt A to here, and let's just select that text, and then I'm going to RZ and then 90 minus, and then let's S to scale that up, let's move that there, and then let's edit this, so edit mode, so let's just type in, I don't know, Flowify out of edit mode, and then that's G, and then wipe that across a bit, and then let's G, and then Z, and then we can just convert this to a mesh, and then go into vertex mode, A, X, and then limited dissolve that, and then we'll E to extrude that out. Now, we're gonna to need to add in some additional edge loops here, so we can sort that out ourselves, or we can use an add-on to do this, so I'm gonna be a bit lazy and just use hard ops. So let's go into object mode, Q and then where's my mesh tools and then we're going to dice I'm going to press V to turn that into boxes let's go to about there, click and then we've got that all sorted for us at this point, that's G and then Z that down let's let S and then make that slightly less wide apply the rotation and scale and we'll flurify it so let's flurify go to my corner, it's yellow go to where I want it to be, click and then we've got Flurify, perfectly deformed. And yeah, like I said, I just think this is fantastic. It's so easy to use things. Now I can just G and then Y or X that across so we could put that onto the side. It's lovely. G and then Z to move it further in or further out. So we've got all of those options sorted. I absolutely think this is amazing. It saves so much time on something that used to be a really, really painful task. It's an absolutely fantastic add-on from Mark Kingsnorth. As I said, I'm gonna have a look at a video looking at this in other scenarios. For example, we might want to do this on a cylinder, which is very easy to do. And there are some other nice tricks that we can do as well. If you are interested in Flowify, there is a link in the description. It is an affiliate link. It means it costs you no more to purchase through that but it does give a little bit of money towards the channel, which is really appreciated as it helps keep these videos coming and keep them free. If you found this video useful, please do hit the like button. And if you want to watch any of the other videos that I've mentioned, the links are in the description. Have a great day, guys.